Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for stopping by to spend some time with me here today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting, tutorials, and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing a card project using the Gina K Designs Lace Flowers stamp set. This stamp set was in the most recent Gina K Designs card kit. And um, I'm going to start off by cutting up some panels of cardstock for stamping. So I'm using Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, 110 pounds. It's my favorite cardstock. I like it for pretty much everything, for card bases, for stamping, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to cut this sheet of cardstock down at, to five and a half inches and then cut it again to four and a quarter. So I'll get four panels of cardstock that measure four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to pull in my stamping mat. This is a rubber mat that I've designed with grid lines on it so that you'll be able to get your sentiments straight and your cardstock straight. And the rubber mat gives fantastic stamping results. So if you're one of those people that like to use acrylic blocks for stamping, then this mat is available on my website at jennycards.ca, available to ship to Canada and the US. I'll leave a link to my website in the description down below. I've got a few Gina K Designs comfort blocks here and I've loaded up a couple of the flowers onto the comfort blocks and I'm conditioning the stamps with the palm of my hand. I just wipe off the manufacturing residue to make sure that I've, I get good transfer of ink with my stamp. So I've inked up my stamp really good and I'm gonna press onto my cardstock and give it a second for the ink to transfer. And I do that for both the small and the larger flowers. And then I decided that I wanted to double stamp this. So I wanted to see if I could get this stamp lined back up and I did not too bad of a job. It lined up pretty good. Uh, I just looked through the stamped image to make sure the lines were all lined up. And I sort of also wanted to make sure that I had the stamp in the right position before I even brought it to the cardstock. So I put it right over top of the flower to make sure it gets all lined up and then look through the image and hope for the best. And then it turns out not too bad. So I'm happy with the results. So I ended up stamping three flowers in total. And for the ink here, I've used Gina K Designs Blue Lagoon ink, in case you're interested in that. I will leave in the description down below all of the products that I use in today's video, links to those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp some of those leaves. And I'm doing the same thing, just wiping off the manufacturing residue. And I'm using Gina K Designs Jelly Bean Green ink for this one. And I'll ink up my stamps really good. And I'm gonna stamp a bunch of those leaves. And I stamp this sort of like, fancy little sprig as well. I stamped that a couple of times. And, and then I'm gonna go to my die cutting machine and I'm gonna cut all of these elements out. This card kit came with the coordinating dies for all of these images. So now that I've done stamping, for now, I'm gonna clean up these flowers and leaves and get everything back onto the carrier sheet and then we'll do some die cutting. So now I've got the dies here and I also have some yellow frog tape. You can use any low tack tape or washi tape for this, but I do recommend it. If you've invested the time to stamp the images, then take the few seconds to line them up and get them taped to your cardstock. I think you'll be happier with the results. So I'm doing that for all of the images. Uh, I'll have to run them through a couple of times because I stamped two of the large flowers and multiples of those leaves. So I just figure out the placement of my flower, line it up. These are really super easy, nothing complicated about this. I run it all through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine and pop out those pieces. And then I'll just take the same adhesive for those dies, move it around on my cardstock. And then I've got all of my elements cut out for this card. So the next thing I'd like to do is go through my embossing folders. I store all of my embossing folders in this little bin. I don't have a lot, um, but I do have some and I don't use them as often as, as I should. I have these beautiful embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp and this one is the Tumbled Hexagons. I've never used it before. I've had it since it came out and uh, I just wanna see what it looks like. I think it's kind of fun and I like geometric patterns. So I'm gonna take a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock 
I'm going to trim it down first. I'm going to trim it to three and three quarters by five. And then I'm going to get it lined up into the center of my embossing folder. This embossing folder is a 3D folder where it has different levels of dimension in it. And I really like the way that those look. So the sandwich that I use for my Gemini Junior die cutting machine is a metal shim, the embossing folder, and a plastic cutting plate. And this sandwich works great for my Simon Says Stamp embossing folders. I have damaged one of my Simon Says Stamp embossing folders trying to figure out the best sandwich and there's really not much I could do about it. It still works, but it's a little warped, so just be careful with that. Okay, so moving along here, I'm going to cut a card base. I've got another piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White across the eight and a half inch side. I'm going to cut the cardstock at four and a quarter, and then I'm going to take this sheet of cardstock that now measures four and a quarter by 11, and I'm going to put it in my scoreboard, and I'm going to score at five and a half. This will give me a top folding a US A2 size card base. And I'm gonna crease that score mark with my bone folder. And I'm gonna pull in a piece of Gina K Designs Ocean Mist cardstock. Um, this is just a scrap I have in my pile. And I'd like to use this piece as a, as a mat for my hexagons. So I'm going to cut this panel to four inches by five and a quarter inches. This will give me a nice quarter inch border all the way around my hexagon panel. And I love the way this looks so far. So I think it's a nice complementary color to my Blue Lagoon. It's a little bit lighter. It's just in the same color family. So now I'm gonna start putting my bits and pieces together. I've got some sticky dot runner here and I'm going to adhere my hexagon panel to my ocean mist piece. And I'll get that centered as best as I can. And then I've decided I would like to put a little bit of craft foam in behind this panel, just to pop it up a little bit, give it some dimension. So I've got a piece of craft foam and I'll just use my scissors. I don't need to be too particular here. I'll just trim it out with my scissors. You're not really gonna see this, so it doesn't matter if it's perfect, as long as it's sort of in behind that panel. So I'll get that trimmed out and then I'm going to use my adhesive and I'll I'll stick everything down to my card front and now I'll start using my elements and trying to figure out where I want my flowers. I just sort of moved everything around trying to figure out my placement. I originally thought I was going to use all three flowers on the front of this card but I really felt like three flowers was too many. So I, I went with two and I popped one of them up. I popped the larger flower up with a little piece of leftover craft foam and then I just tucked in those leaves in behind and that's it. I put it right in the center of the panel. I love the way this turned out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment. This stamp set has a bunch of greetings that you can mix and match, but I just chose this simple little stamp that says love and hugs. So I tried to get this sentiment strip lined up on my block by using the grid lines on my block and I wasn't getting it straight. So I pulled in my stamping mat and I lined up my words right on the center black line. There is a thick black line down the center of my stamping mat and I lined up the words on there and then picked it up with my acrylic block and it was perfectly straight. So I was happy with that. And now I was going to use this white scrap of cardstock, but then at the last minute, I decided to switch around and use the ocean mist. So I stamped using Versafine Onyx Black ink, and I pressed a little bit too hard because the words are so delicate. Not a lot of pressure is required here. So I stamped it again, and I was happier with the result the second time. So I went ahead and I trimmed this out with my scissors. And I also trimmed out a little tiny sliver of craft foam so I can pop up my sentiment as well. I used liquid glue for this. I have these precision tip glue bottles that I get from Amazon and I fill them with whatever glue that I've got. I think this one is particularly full of Mod Podge and I love that glue. I, it's great for everything. So I just adhered my craft foam to my little sentiment strip and then I adhered that directly to my card and I just used some reverse tweezers to give me an extra hand here so I could figure out where I wanted the sentiment strip. And I adhered that down to the bottom right underneath my flower and I love the way that looks. 
Then I decided to add a couple of sequins to this card. And uh, this sequin mix is from Simon Says Stamp. It's called April Showers. And I just thought that the colors were the perfect complement to the colors I chose for my card. And for the last step, I'm going to take a tonic shimmer pen. And I just painted over my flower and my leaves just to give it that little extra something. This shimmer pen adds lots of sparkle. It's a very subtle sparkle, but when you tilt it in the light, you can really see it. And then for my envelope, I have a coordinating ocean mist envelope. I had one flower and a few leaves left over, so I decided to glue those to the front of my envelope just to give it that extra coordinating feel so everything ties together nicely. So I like the way that looks and uh, that's it for this card. Super simple. Uh, I didn't really work that hard, but I had some fun creating in my craft space. Here's a close-up look at our finished card project. I had lots of fun playing in my craft room today and just pulling out this Gina K Designs card kit. I believe that this card kit is still available. I will link in the description down below if you want to check that out. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate the support as always. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. So have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!